Of course, the NRA is continuing its push against President Obama's proposals for uh, what I would call modest gun control measures, and now facing new questions about why the NRA itself has flip-flopped in its positions on those very issues. And we're going to get to a comment from a recent past president of the NRA about why the NRA has changed its position on a key issue in which 93 percent of American support will get to all of that. But let's start with a little history of the NRA because I think it gets missed, it gets forgotten in our look at gun control and where the NRA is. There is a, was a recent piece in the Atlantic magazine about how the NRA was not for really most of its life an opponent of gun control. In fact, in many state legislatures, the NRA is actually lobbying against the very laws that the NRA itself created, developed, lobbied for, and passed. Back in the 1930s, the NRA lobbied for a number of gun control laws as violence from the mafia was escalating. Of course, that's changed. Why has it changed? Because in the last 20 years, the NRA has been financed has gotten a huge amount of financing from gun manufacturers. And so this week, as the NRA was on Capitol Hill testifying against gun control legislation, new questions came up about why the NRA has switched its positions. And it's important to remember which positions it has switched. In 1999, the NRA's president, Wayne LaPierre, had this to say about gun-free school zones. He said, quote, we think it's reasonable to support the Federal Gun-Free School Zones Act. That's Wayne LaPierre, the same Wayne LaPierre in 1999, the same one who said in 2012, quote, politicians pass laws for gun-free school zones. They issue press releases bragging about them. They post signs supporting and advocating for them, and in doing so, they tell every insane killer, every insane killer in America, that schools are their safest place to inflict maximum mayhem with minimum risk. So obviously the NRA has flip-flopped there. In 1999, on universal background checks, and this is the, really the big news of the day, here's Wayne LaPierre, quote, we think it's reasonable to provide mandatory instant criminal background checks for every sale at every gun show, no loopholes anywhere for anyone. Of course, the NRA has changed their position now. Wayne LaPierre, the same one who said that, up on Capitol Hill this week, lobbying against universal background checks. Now, the former past president of the NRA was asked about this flip-flop on CNN. Here is what she had to say about that. The answer, Anderson, is yes. The NRA has changed its position. And the reason it's changed its position is because the system doesn't work. The NICS system is not working now. We have to get that working before we can add any more checks to that system. And let's get it working. Let's make sure that the 23 states that aren't reporting the names of people who are mentally ill and have violent tendencies, let's get those reported into okay. the system. Anderson, I don't, I just and then we can take a look at uh, the most amazing part about this, I mean, there's a lot of amazing parts about this, but the most amazing part about this is making the perfect the enemy of the good. This is a standard way that the NRA and the gun lobby argues for its position. You hear it oftentimes when it says, well, if we ban AR-15s, if we ban uh, semi-automatic assault weapons, uh, that wouldn't necessarily stop all mass school shootings. It's this idea that if a solution, if, a, if something good doesn't fully solve a problem, then it's not a good idea. In this case, you hear a different wrinkle on that argument. The idea that because the existing system that doesn't cover all background checks, doesn't cover all gun sales, because that system isn't working perfectly, we shouldn't actually expand the system. And gun control advocates, I think, made the right point when this question was asked and it was written about in the Huffington Post, the New York Times, they basically said, why can't we do both? Why can't we make the existing system work as it should? And why can't we expand the current system? Now that's a position that most Americans support. There was a new poll out about universal background checks this week from CBS News. Here's what that poll found. 93%, 93% of Americans support universal background checks. And this is not just 93% of Democrats. This is 93% of all Americans. That includes 89% of Republicans. That includes 93% of gun households and 85% of households with NRA members. So the NRA arguing 
that because the existing system isn't perfect, it means we can't expand that existing system, they are at odds, essentially, with their own members. And it's important to remember why this is such, why this is such a critical issue. We, we throw around a lot of terms in politics that become talking points and they lose their meaning. What really is a univer does universal background checks mean? What is that really referring to? It's referring to the fact that in about 40% of all gun sales, there are no background checks. That essentially, the gun sales that are subjected to background checks are those that happen in the store, in a store that's a federally licensed firearms dealer. But there are all sorts of gun purchases, gun transactions, that happen outside of a store. Gun shows, of course, are the biggest example of that. So we're talking about not a small issue here. We're talking about 40% of all gun sales still not being subjected to any background check whatsoever. And so when 93% of the country says that they support this, and the NRA nonetheless says we have to make the perfect the enemy of the good, the NRA is essentially arguing that 40% of all gun sales in the United States should have no background checks whatsoever.